Welcome to Total Apex Sports. This is the fourth and goal. I'm Andrew with uh, our dear beat writer and fantasy writer, uh, Cody. And uh, we're going to be talking about last night's game where uh, my, my rating fell to the Chiefs 27-20. But honestly, I did not think they should – they shouldn't have been in this game like because of the how rusty the offense won, won and the amount of mistakes they uh, – they had. Um, what did you think about that game, Cody? Yeah, Andrew, I agree with you. I the the game felt more lopsided than the the scoreboard mm-hmm. indicated. That's for sure. Um, Ravens were lucky to be in it at the end and have a chance to win. Uh, by all rights, man, I it was like, oh, I thought they had it. That was brutal, heartbreaker for you know Ravens fans, anybody with a vested uh, rooting interest, betters. You know, uh, it was an exciting finish, uh, but just kind of like crushing uh but yeah i mean all night it was like ravens receivers were having trouble getting separation uh against the kansas city secondary uh kansas city did a great job at bottling up uh you know mark andrews and and derrick henry for the most part and you know they forced lamar to make plays with his legs and he did that i mean he looked pretty good on the ground uh he had a nice night for fantasy owners i mean you you can't complain Mm -hmm. about a a nice outing like that to start the week uh but yeah, I'm I'm with you, man. It was uh, kind of uh, surprising that they had a chance to hang in there. Yeah, I I do like that Lamar shedded weight because he looked way faster than last year. Like if he ran the way he did in the championship game last year, like I felt like they probably would have gone to the Super Bowl because like because uh, all that that weight he just did not take off the same way that he did, like, years ago. So, uh, I mean, this is, like, a positive sign for Lamar, but at the same time, like, 16 carry for him with with Derrick Henry only getting 13, like, that can't be the the way they rule this this season. Yeah, I I think it was uh, just a sign that the Ravens' offense was in – total improvisation mode i mean for for your starting quarterback you know the reigning mvp to out carry derrick henry i mean that that just like saying those words out loud sounds nuts right yeah and it's just like yeah okay derrick henry you know he he looked okay last night i i thought he was running pretty high you know he's he's always kind of been a, a higher pad level runner and he's been able to get away with it because of how strong he is um but Yeah, I I think uh, Lamar Jackson kind of had to take the game on his shoulders and just try to make something work. And um, I think they're going to they're going to clean it up. I mean, starting the week, Thursday night football. I mean, they're they're going to clean it up, I think, for fantasy purposes. Uh, It's still going to be, you know, a a fantasy rich offense. We're we're really going to have to keep an eye on how they utilize Isaiah likely going forward. And, you know, is he an extension of that receiving core? it kind of looked like it last night, you know, maybe they were just exploiting a weakness in the, in the uh, defense uh, that Kansas city was playing against them last night. Maybe it'll be, you know, a a weekly repeat. Uh, It'll be interesting to see moving forward. Yeah. I, I think um, Andrew went definitely uh, 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 bracketed a little bit more. Um, He's had, Issue like he's always been the main focal point for the Kansas City defense every time they play him. Um, in terms of like, I I think he likely will definitely be involved as like a potential starting tight end, like in a pinch. Like I'm not sure. Um, in terms of like like moving forward, if that's something you can totally bank on, like if he does, but 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 at the same time, like. You know, Lamar trusts him and seems like he just, he just uh, like he's just never been a a guy to like have all like the physical traits and whatnot. But he just knows how to get open, and that seems to be a, a thing with Lamar. And he trusts him um, when you know the the uh, outside coverage with like Bateman and stuff get get bottled up. But um, yeah, I. I just hope we see less Nate Flowers screens. I, I know the offensive line couldn't hold up, but it looked the, the same as last year. It, it was crazy. 
Yeah, and it, it was really interesting to hear you just describe Isaiah Likely and his relationship with Lamar Jackson because the words you were using sounded identical to Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Travis Kelsey, he's not the fastest guy on the field. Like he, He's just one of those guys that we've watched for so many years now, and it's like, how is he always open? How is he like Patrick always finding him? And it's exactly the same as what you just described yeah. with Likely and Lamar. Right. Like Lamar obviously trusts likely likely has a good feel for where other bodies are at around him on the football field. And even on that long touchdown that Isaiah likely had last night, you know, he, he had to fake out like three guys, right? And the yeah. last one was a defender screaming at him right at the goal line. Isaiah likely is a big dude. He could have easily just lowered his shoulder and still scored, but he had presence of mind and spatial awareness enough to just er, throw on the brakes, yeah, let the that, defender that like okay. fly right by and beautiful touchdown. And he was able to save his body some, some impact. Right. I mean, it's, uh, it's really interesting to think about it in those terms of, of uh, could that be a relationship moving forward? And uh, just real quick to button up the tight end situation uh, with Baltimore, like Mark Andrews last night, you know, uh, there's one pass he caught in particular. It was mm -hmm. third down. And yeah. you know the one I'm talking about. He caught the ball and, and he went right to the ground. And people were like, oh, did he slip? Like what happened? But no, he thought he was going to get hit. You watch that replay over and over and over again. He catches the ball and he immediately goes to protect himself because he thinks a hit's coming, right? And so yeah. I think that there's a little bit of a factor that, you know, like as, as fantasy analysts, fantasy players that, you know, we, we don't talk about a whole lot because fantasy football is so data and statistics driven, mm -hmm. but like the, the mental game of football, like for a tight end, who's been as explosive and, you know, great for fantasy as Mark Andrews has been over the years. Like he's, he's had a struggle mentally coming back from some of these injuries that have made him miss so many games. Like last yeah. night, I thought we saw a player who just, his mind wasn't quite right. Like he was sort of playing a little bit timid. It seemed like, and uh, okay. Week one. Yeah. I mean, let's see how he, he kind of goes from there, but I think just from a fantasy lens, you know, sometimes when we look at performances like this that are sort of have an asterisk next to them of, of like, oh, is this going to be a, a repeat, you know, performance? We don't know, kind of moving forward. But, yeah, I, I think it's yeah. interesting just to kind of like look at like sort of the human aspect of these fantasy football players that all of us have so much invested in. Right. Like he was in a car crash like a few weeks ago. I and mean, he got – he, he was totally fine from that, they, they said. But, yeah, like the mental aspect, that could have played a factor. Maybe he missed a few more practices. Um, but, yeah, I, I think they'll they'll ease him in a little bit more. Um, but in terms of, like, yeah, like the, the timid, timidness, like he, he did seem like, – like him and, like, Zay Flowers kind of does that too where – he kind of just like like Tyler Luck is known for this. Like they just catch the ball, they just sit down. Like um, that that happens. But yeah, for for Andrews, like it's kind of going to be interesting how they spread. This might be like more of a like oh like one guy pops off, but you just don't know who. Like it's not a like like totally uh, tight end centric offense like it was before before Andrews got hurt. To where like oh like oh maybe a receiver can can get a touchdown but it's usually to the to the tight end but that might that might change but we'll see but um for the uh, the Chiefs um, I I guess I can say the same thing with Kelsey because uh, he had a he was used on on the third down clutch drive uh, clutch plays but he was not that involved. Um, but the Ravens probably knew that, and they they covered it up. Yeah, and in and in true fashion, I mean Andy Reid, he's always had a really good screen uh, game plan, you know, heading into matchups, and you know, just the fact that they were utilizing uh, Gray in those middle screens for, to the tight end that you, you used to see go to Kelsey a lot. You know, like yeah, that, Kelsey was more of a decoy, and and you know he had a pretty nice game, really. Uh, that was sort of unexpected and um 
Yeah, boy. I mean, wild night to start week one. I mean, it's it's going to be crazy to see what tonight brings uh, with that right. matchup down in Brazil and and the Packers and the and the Eagles down there, both wearing white uniforms. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, um, yeah. Tom, Tom and Noah Gray. I I think it it was interesting. Like right before last night game, like they did extend Gray. I I did not think. He would be that big of a factor because, like, if you if you give those three other targets to Kelsey, like that's a you know decent performance, like that that definitely double digit points. Um, but yeah, the the main thing was uh, the Rasheed Rice over the middle slant thing. Um, you know, he mm-hmm. he's gonna be a huge uh, steal for for fantasy uh, from the looks of it, uh, and the same with Worthy too. Well, and and talking about steals uh, for fantasy purposes, uh, Marquise Brown, he was anticipated to go on IR, right? He was out last Mm -hmm. night, but he it's looking like, I mean, they have this sort of little mini bye week since they, they opened the season on Thursday night football, like Marquise Brown might play next week for the chiefs. So, uh, yeah. Andrew, why don't you just kind of tell me where you're at on, uh, from what you saw last night with the chiefs receiving core, how is Marquise Brown kind of going to fold in with worthy and Rishi rice? Yeah, that's going to be interesting because like, I, I know everyone's talk, going to be talking about worthy two touchdowns and and the the big uh, the big play, but in terms of like he was kind of you know he was kind of eased in, so I actually think that the the consistent play would definitely be Rice because just because he's been in the system and they know how to use him, um, but yeah, Marking Brown will definitely get um, some more looks on the outside. I mean, I'm sure they'll they'll ease him in too, but. Um, yeah, in terms of like starting worthy as a every week uh, play, that I guess I would maybe do it as like a flex play. But yeah, Marquis Brown should. I mean, they they signed him for a reason to to buff up that core. So like, they played to like Justin Watson and like Juju got a few targets. He did not look that that good. I, I think they'll no. go to Brown for sure. So would you start Marquise Brown if he's active next week? Oh, that that is uh interesting. Um if he's active, I guess I would say it would be more like a flex play. Like I would definitely not start him as a wide receiver too. Just because like same like the the Ravens, like this the, the Chiefs are kind of a spread out offense now. Like it, it used to be oh like four feet to Kelsey because they didn't have another wide receiver. But then the backstretch of last year, Rishi Wright got more involved. So uh, Brown, Brown could definitely – he will he'll definitely make a play or two here and there. But in terms of, like, uh, target value-wise, I think it's still right. Um, that will get the majority of that. Okay. And, uh, you know, as far as Kansas City Chiefs uh, – you know, fantasy outlook for their receiving core. I mean, it's speed everywhere. I mean, you got Xavier Worthy, who set the combine record, right? He broke John Ross's uh, record for the fastest 40 time. Uh, Rishi Rice is no slouch. And Marquise Hollywood Brown is a speedster as well. What do you think about them moving forward? And if NFL defenses kind of like take the approach like, hey, you know, in order to slow these guys down, we got to put some bodies on them and we got to beat them up a little bit because they're all, you know, not very big guys. You know, it's not like a bunch of little, you know, DK Met- Metcalfs running around out there for the Chiefs. I mean, they're mm-hmm. they're all pretty slim receivers. You know, do you think that that could be a, a tactic and a fantasy factor moving forward if NFL defenses kind of like say, oh, hey, let's yeah, be really I mean- physical with these guys? Yeah, like if if they they easily could look at that game plan last night and be like, oh, like we could just you know cover we'll we'll just focus everything on Rasheed Rice now and and still uh, keep an eye out for Kelsey. Um, yeah, those those deep shots could be there on the outside for either Worthy or Brown. Um, but yeah, we could uh, we could quickly um, move on to we could preview a little bit of. This uh, the Packers Eagles game tonight. 
Um, yeah, I, uh, they they definitely uh, that is definitely a uh, interesting game. I think uh, I think I, I still give it to the to the Eagles to be favored in this one, um, but it's going to be close. Like it'll it'll be like tonight's game most likely that like by a score. So uh, I haven't looked at the rushing props for tonight yet, but who's going to have more rushing yards, Saquon Barkley or Josh Jacobs? Oh, uh, I I think Saquon. I I just think that like the the Eagles got pat like the the Eagles defense got exposed last year. There there's no way that they allow uh. I guess like it's also like um, the the Packers can spread it out more, but for the Eagles, like they they always have had like an integral like running portion of their game, and uh, I I would say Saquon by a little bit. It, it won't be by a lot though. And and where do you buy in on uh, you know Josh Jacobs and his fantasy production this year? <clears throat> He's a guy that I have uh, you know in, in in my leagues. I don't have any shares of Josh Jacobs this year. I'm uh, I'm kind of of the of the mind that his better days are are behind him. And uh, you know I think that it's just a matter of time before you know we see a little bit more Marshawn Lloyd in the backfield for the Packers. Uh, what's your opinion on what you're seeing from Josh Jacobs and, and your analysts on him? Actually, I, I did have him in a redraft league because I, I am kind of high on him. Um, just because, like, Lloyd will definitely be a factor later in the season, but, like, um, you know, they the Packers cut Aaron Jones for a reason, and they, they sought after Jacobs. He also took a he also took less money to go there compared to like the Giants, for example. Um, so maybe, maybe it's because like obviously he wants to win, and um, he's in a better offense for sure. Uh, but yeah, I I think uh, I, I I think he's gonna be a he's gonna be a top ten running back for like later on in the season. That that could be a little muddied, but. <laughs> Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's, that's interesting. You say that because if you are a, a Josh Jacobs truther, you know, like for what fantasy drafters had to pay to get him this year was just a little bit more than I was willing to go, you know, in, in, right. you know, 12 team leagues, Josh Jacobs was going in the second round. Like to me, I was like, Ooh, you know, there was some targets there I'd rather have, I think that are a little, uh, little safer for, you know, that high of a, of a round pick. And, uh, you know, if, if uh, he lives up to, you know, your, your thoughts on him being a top 10, uh, you know, running back for fantasy purposes this year, that, that makes him an RB1 on the season. And, man, I, I think that uh, he's going to have to perform up to that level for fantasy managers to get their return on him. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I, did, I didn't target him in, in round two, but it was more of like a round three, four, like, um, actually, in, in one of my redraft leagues, I wanted uh, uh, Ken Walker uh, in that round and um, instead of Jacob, but he got taken the pick before me, so I had to get uh, Jacob after that. But um, yeah, like I, I guess I, I definitely would prefer a few, like, like some people are kind of down on like Rashad White, like, I, I think, like. I, I kind of like his outlook better than Jacob, and um, same with like Ken Walker, Jane Cook, like those type of guys. Like I would definitely lift them ahead for sure. Um, but yeah, I, th I think at least he had a decent floor. Um, I, I guess it is kind of. I did see a stat somewhere that um, new running back that changed teams, like their fantasy outlook. For that year, like it dips like a little bit to potentially if they stayed on the team. So that that is a little bit maybe like uh, you know alleviate expectations a bit for for him. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Um, I think Rashad White's going to have another big year. I mean, um, but yeah, in terms of uh, 
getting back to like top ten running back, like uh, I, I think um, I think Ken Walker had like the easy path to the top ten running back this week, uh, along with Rashad. Well, Rashad White's already in the top eight, but him and um, James Cook, like they have smash matchups. Um, yeah, but, I yeah. agree, man. I, I think Kenny Walker, I mean, smash matchup. I mean, for him to be ranked RB 13 is kind of criminal. I mean, <laughs> yeah, sleeper for sure there. It's like, I think fantasy owners can start him with utmost confidence. Yeah. I try to contact that manager. I was like Josh Jacobs and, and, and something. And he's like, no, like, damn. Um, but, but right. I, I actually had this, uh, personal question for my only uh i am starting either i i'm have to start chuba hubbard or brian robinson as my second running back i am very in ppr i am leaning towards hubbard but actually i also have pollard too so i have all three of these guys uh <laughs> which which would you lean towards well i i think that uh chuba hubbard he basically has no uh, competition right now with snap share. I mean, you got Miles Sanders who hurt his hand or something, and you got Jonathan Brooks who's still out. Uh, I think just based on that alone, I'd probably lean Chuba. Uh, Brian Robinson, I think he's going to dominate the snaps in, in Washington, but we still want to see how Eckler folds in. And then Pollard, I mean, it could be a 50-50 split or 60-40 in favor of Tajay Spears. Yeah, I... I, I... I had the same mindset. Um, I I only I did that I uh, did that Jacob trade just because uh, I mean this might have not been smart, but I really wanted the McBride Murray stack, and uh, I I had to trade away Kincaid to do it. But I, I mostly took Kincaid because he was kind of like the last guy available, you know. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, who's another running back on this list that you can see uh, vaulting up into the top twenty potentially? Yeah, I I uh, have been a truther of Mr. Aaron Jones for every okay. year he's been in the league now. Now your uh, your stat that you spit out about uh, running backs going to new teams and seeing a down a downturn in production. Man, if if there's any player that could maybe break that mold, it's Aaron Jones. So right. you got Sam yeah, Darnold at quarterback, and it, you know that Justin Jefferson is going to be his first read on every single pass play called for you know for the most part. But it's like if if Justin Jefferson isn't not open or if he's double covered, I mean Aaron Jones is going to be check down Charlie, dump it off, and get the ball in his hands, let him go make a play. So this week against a, a, a Giants defense that really isn't looking a ton better kind of to start the year than they ended last year. I mean, give me Aaron Jones to crack the top 10 in week one this year. Yeah, I, I, I at least he's very healthy to start out the year. Like, yeah, I don't think he can have a worse year last year dealing with injuries and missing time. Um and so on. Um, I guess we can get to the uh, wide receivers. Uh... Yeah, and and uh, just to button up Aaron Jones, too, if you look at how he finished last year, I think the last four weeks when he was kind of finally healthy after battling that hamstring all year long, he put up nice mm -hmm. numbers and he looked good, and the Packers were looking sharp heading into the playoffs. So I think it yeah. was uh, it was kind of a, a heartbreaking loss for Packer fans to lose Aaron Jones. I don't think he really wanted to leave either. Uh, but I mean, for him to land with a division opponent, uh, I mean, he's probably looking to make the Packer faithful really miss him on the first game. Yeah, in in another league, I actually um, this is just because I had Kyler Murray. Um, and the Cardinals, uh, I, I traded Connor straight up for Aaron Jones. I mean, and I, I don't think that that was a bad move either. Um, just because, no. like, you know, they're similar age, but in terms of, like, upside, if both stay healthy, um, I think Aaron Jones could – he doesn't have – like, he had Ty Chandler, but I, I think the, the Vikings want – they wanted 
an upgrade for sure. Like if they totally trusted Chandler, they they wouldn't have gone after like a veteran running back like that. So I, I think that was a good, a pretty good move. Yep. So um, I got a sit start question for you, Andrew. Um, okay. So if we look at the receivers here, so I have a redraft league where I need to start uh, basically two of these three players, right? So we're looking at Brandon Ayuk, uh, yeah. you know, coming off of his holdout, playing against the Jets and might see a lot of Sauce Gardner. Uh, or I have to play George Pickens or – um, Keenan Allen, if Keenan Allen goes, he's questionable. Right. Uh, that, that is a, uh, that is a tough one. Um, I, I think I still lean IU just, just because like he's in a way better offense, like starting out. I, I think Keenan Allen, I kind of want to see. How he used with DJ Moore and um, uh, you know Roma Dunze like that that is still kind of up in the air for and uh, against the Titans defense that will be pretty good and um, apparently I, I saw this stat too like rookie QBs like they they uh, they usually don't win their first start uh, it's pretty tough but but the Bears right. are projected for a decent amount of points. Um, but yeah, I guess I lean Ayuk. Uh, also, in terms of, I, I mean, I know Pickens is the number one in Pittsburgh, but you know Arthur Smith offense, Russell Wilson has a calf injury, so it might be Fields, and, and you know how that goes. Um, so that there's risk there. Um, yeah, I know. I was thinking about like it before the Russell Wilson news came out. I was like, ah, Pickens, you know, he might see a lot of. Uh, um AJ Terrell too, you know, for the Falcons. And he's he's pretty pretty locked down out there on the edge as well. Um and I I just recalled I it was actually it was Amari Cooper, Brandon Ayuk, George <laughs> Pickens, who I was trying to to decide between. And I was gonna give Keenan Allen one week to see how he's used. So tell me what your uh, your outlook is on Amari Cooper playing against his former team in the Cowboys. Yeah, I I think uh, it, it's all going to be dependent on the uh, QB play. But Cooper's stats with Watson weren't that bad last year. He did have those few blow-up games with Joe Flacco. But I, I think he, he can easily be a solid wide receiver two type. Um, I guess the Cowboys – I, I think he'd be – I think I rate him uh, pretty highly uh, I, I um, in terms of, like, over – so you said Pickens and, and who else? Uh, so it's uh, Pickens, Amari Cooper, and Brandon Ayuk. I, I think I lean Cooper in that aspect if, if – uh, the uh, the IU thing still, you know, like because he he literally was not the thing at all with the with the holdout. Um, yeah, no, I, I think I go, I think I go Cooper. Okay, yeah, I was yeah. like, you know, thinking about the Cowboys secondary, right? Like Deron Bland, he's out for the year. You know, it's like, oh, okay, you know, it might be a little bit, uh, you know, easier for receivers to get open and. And all that so yeah I, and and amari cooper i mean he's kind of the body of consistency right for fantasy production he's never like the sexy name he's never like the guy that everybody wants to talk about but it's just like week in week out especially in ppr leagues he's just quietly dropping 15 to 20 fantasy points and if he happens to catch a couple touchdowns in a game i mean he'll yeah. he'll he'll put a 30 burger on you you know so it's yeah, it's kind of tough yeah, especially against his whole team at home. And um, 
this I think this was a thing last year too, but it's been a thing for for Cooper like pre- previous years. Like his uh his home road splits are are crazy. Like he's very he's pretty. I mean his floor isn't that bad either away, but you definitely want to start him more in in home games for sure. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, but but yeah, in terms of uh, this week, you're you're mostly starting your top guys. Um, we did hear today that uh, T Higgins is doubtful with a hamstring injury, and Chase is yep. questionable. Um, and then he said if he is playing, he's going to be limited. I don't know. I I think Chase plays, and I think he's fine. If I'm being honest, I, I think the more concerning thing, like especially if Higgins is out, like if 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 Chase sits and Higgins is out, like that that is like a total f you to the team. I feel like for sure, yeah. And at, at that point, you know, as fantasy managers, oh, how bad do we wish that Tyler Boyd was still a Bengal? You know, I would be right. smashing Tyler Boyd if he was still on the team. But it's like. Who are they going to turn to? Is it going to be, you know, like a big uh, Chase Brown game? Is it going to be, you know, Zach Moss? Like, is it going to be Bengals tight ends? I mean, who are they going to throw the ball to if those two are out? Yeah, because, uh, you know, Andre Yosivas, he, he's like a, a, a second-year player. They have Jermaine Byrne, the rookie, but but throwing him in the first game, I, I can't trust that. That's just uh, – that's very iffy for me. Um, but in terms of like, uh, I, I guess they have Marvin Harrison ranked twelfth against the Bills. That that is a good matchup, but um, I I would still favor like like Nick like Nico Collins. Like I don't know, it's kind of tough because like guys like Drake London, Nico Collins, we we kind of have to like see, but they. They still ha- show Chase talent um, to to be a top top fantasy wide receiver. Yeah, and you know, just uh, talking about rookie starts, right? So you got Marvin Harrison Jr. starting on the road in Buffalo, and that's a that's a crazy environment for a rookie to play his first game in. I mean, Bills Mafia is for real up there, but uh, yeah, you know. And then you got Caleb Williams, right, starting his first game at home in Soldier Field. Like, there's a player that's sort of in between here that I'm all about the over on this week, and that's DJ Moore. I think DJ Moore is going to have an amazing game, uh, even with a rookie quarterback. All he needs is one big throw to have a huge game. I mean, it's – it's just sort of like for him to be ranked wide receiver 22 on fantasy pros. Like I get it. Rookie quarterback first start, yada, yada, yada. But on the other hand, like we've seen DJ Moore do magical things with Mitch Trubisky, Mm -hmm. with Justin Fields. Like, I mean, the guy is a bona fide superstar in this league and he has all the talent that a lot of the top guys have. And he just, doesn't get the recognition because of quarterback situation. Yeah, like for like Malik Neighbors, like a rookie, uh, like Drake London, Michael Pittman, like oh, like I would definitely put um, like DJ Moore up there. Um, it, it is going to be I, – I, I guess they just don't know the, the split with all the receivers, but I mean I, I don't think that should affect DJ Moore, uh, if I'm being honest, compared to like some of these other guys. Yeah, like I'd be more um, wary of Roma Dunze. I'd be more wary of Keenan Allen. Like Keenan Allen, I'm like a Keenan Allen truther this year. I think he's going to be awesome if he's healthy for Caleb Williams because, I mean, let's face it. I mean, Keenan Allen's lost a step. He's not the deep threat that he once was, but he's still an absolute technician when he's running his routes. He's quick off the ball, and he has great hands. So, I mean, that's what you want to help your rookie quarterback out and Caleb Williams, right? So, like – I'm really high on Keenan Allen moving forward. I just want to see how he's doing with his heel injury in this game and kind of how that's going to yeah, go. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that, and that makes me just kind of want to like 
you know, smash the over on DJ Moore, especially, you know, with, with Keenan kind of being a question mark, Odunze don't quite know how that connection is going to go. Whereas DJ Moore is sort of a known commodity for fantasy owners. Right. Uh, we can move to, uh, to tight end and quarterback real quick. I mean, it, it's basically, if, if you got the starting, you know, the top five to 10 guys, like you're not benching them for, um, for, for most, uh, uh, other players, but yeah, like do for, for tight end, like, uh, do, do you see a, a name that, that sticks out? I mean, other than likely next week, like he's going to be a top commodity for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think that the big X factor here for tight ends in week one is going to be Brock Bowers. I mean, for, okay. for a rookie to be ranked 12th on fantasy pros. So, I mean, that's, that's a starting tight end in 12 team leagues, right? Uh, he hasn't played hardly at all in preseason. He's been injured, but yet like the draft capital and, and just his college accolades coming in. I mean, how is he going to get used? Can Gardner Minshew get him the ball? Will the Raiders offensive line have enough time to gel with starting left tackle Colton Miller being out all of preseason and, uh, uh, powers Johnson being out with a concussion most of the preseason. Like how is that offensive line going to be able to protect? But I mean, as far as Raiders pass catchers, I mean, they have an abundance of top tier talent on that team. What's the target share going to look like? So I could see Brock Bowers possibly scooting up. Uh, I think he's probably pretty accurately ranked, but if you need a dart throw, you know, and he's a guy that's on your roster and maybe you could start Bowers over, uh, maybe like, a Jake Ferguson, Dave, David Njoku, you know, in week one, I could see that. Uh, I think Dallas mm -hmm. Goddard's going to have a nice game tonight. I probably wouldn't start him over him, but, uh, yeah, there's a couple guys up on that list. Like just sort of based on matchup and and scheme i could i could see fantasy managers maybe going uh taking that uh, that risk on brock bowers in his first start yeah uh a player i wasn't really high on but you know they they actually just uh gave him a contract extension to pat fryer move um i know arthur smith yeah. lefty multiple tight ends so i know they have uh they still have darnell washington out there and uh i i think they got uh the former Falcon third string tight end. Uh, I, I forget his name. He's probably on here. Um, but yeah, in terms of uh, players that should take a, a step forward from last year with, with that uh, mess of a situation, Pat Frymuth might have a good first game um, on uh, against the Falcons. Yeah, I could see that coming to fruition. Uh, you know, I would say even more so if Justin Fields gets to start. If you look at Justin yeah. Fields last year with Chicago, with Cole Komet, like Cole Komet wasn't a fantasy monster last year, but by far and away, he oh, had yeah. his best statistical uh, year last year. And, you know, who else is Fields going to throw the ball to? Pickens? I mean, right. I can see Fryermuth like, kind of being, you know, a little bit safer of an option for Fields who – uh, you know, it might not have enough time to throw with that uh, Steelers offensive line still being a question mark. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I, I he at, at least for for field like that that definitely uh, checked out. Um, but yeah, we can we can basically move to to quarterback. Um, in terms of, uh, I I think the. You're, you're starting your top guy. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Jan Daniels just had a top five finish this week, like next to like Anthony Richardson, like that type of performance. Um, especially if like the Bengals receivers are out, then you got to move Burrow down a little bit. Um, Mahomes had a not a great game, so he probably isn't going to finish in the top five or maybe even 10. Um, so yeah, I, I would be uh invested in anthony richardson and jane daniels yeah i think as far as like the two the two big name rookies right caleb and and Jaden, uh i think caleb williams is in a in a smash start scenario against 
the Titan defense at home. Whereas Jaden Daniels, there's a few things that really concern me about him in his first start, right? Aside from him being a rookie. The other one is Dan Quinn, new defensive coordinator in Tampa Bay, and them still having one of the more talented defensive rosters in the NFL, right? Like that you could, you could argue that Tampa Bay talent wise uh, on the line backers uh, and secondary, like they're still, yeah, that, that is you know, true. so I, I just want to see because, because you know, Dan Quinn's going to blitz the heck out of Jaden Daniels. He's going to make him uncomfortable, but it's like, what can Jaden do with his legs in that situation? And, you know, throwing on the run. So if he can, if he can take care of the football and make a few big plays with his legs and a few big throws down the field as he's getting chased, I mean, yeah, you're right. He, he could have a nice day for fantasy owners. I'm just going to temper my ex- expectations a little bit more for him than I am Caleb Williams. Right. Yeah, that, that, that definitely could happen. It's uh, not an easy start against uh, Todd Bowles. But um, in terms of, like, we have uh, Jared Goff, uh, jo- uh, Jordan Love, like they they should have pre- uh, probably like two and Trevor Warren and Matt Stafford all all fit in this category. I think Jared Goff can have a excellent game against the Rams defense without Aaron Donald. And um, I mean, long term, like this this year, I saw that he plays like three fourths of the schedule at at either home or just in a dome. So, like, you know, his indoor-outdoor splits are massive for, for fantasy. Yeah, I, I love it. And and look at how, how good of a game Jared Goff played when these teams met in the playoffs just a few months ago, yeah. right? Like, it's it's going to be another night of, of a show. It's going to be a, an awesome Sunday night game. Uh, I'm with you, man. I think that Jared Goff with – uh, Jamison Williams, who really came around at the end of last season and just having another weapon now that I'm on Ross St. Brown's getting all that attention. Uh, I, I think with Laporta and a, and a bona fide, you know, two stud wide receiver setup that the Lions have, man, that offensive line is still one of the best in the league, if not the best. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Smash. Yeah. All right. That, that's going to do it for uh... – Totally big sports on the fourth and goal. Um, where can they find your work and your socials, Cody? Yeah, I uh, cover the Chicago Bears beat for Total Apex Sports. Uh, Cody Nickel Tab or Chicago Bears. And then uh, on socials, uh, on X, I'm uh, Cody underscore from underscore MT. And uh, Instagram, I'm at Scenic42. Okay, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at kuvikim1357. Um, you can follow Toy Epic Sports, uh, uh, fantasy, uh, entertainment, gaming. You know, we, we have it all basically. Uh, but yeah, uh, 